everybody, today I'm actually in Fishers, Indiana, and from where I'm standing right now, this behind me is the intersection of Cynthia Ann Road and 104th Street. You would kind of never really know for sure if you're in Fishers. We are almost as east as you can get in Fishers, and we're gonna talk about what this area is like and how this area, I really don't think it's as far east as what it felt like in years past, at least anymore, so stay tuned. Hey everybody, I'm Jason Compton with the Compton Home Group. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time to the channel and you wanna know everything there is to know about Fishers, Indiana, or of course, Far East Fishers, Indiana, or anywhere in Indianapolis or the surrounding metro, then make sure you hit the subscribe button. Also tap the little bell so you're notified every time we do a new video. Now we have people reaching out to us from all over the country with questions absolutely about Fishers, Indiana, and some of the other cities that, of course, that surround Indianapolis, like Carmel and Greenwood, Plainfield, a lot of the cities and towns that surround Indianapolis, and Indianapolis itself. So if you have questions at all about anything Indianapolis or any of the surrounding cities and towns, then make sure you reach out any way you know how. We'll always have your back with those questions, and we'll certainly have your back whenever it comes time for you to make your move to the Indy Metro. All right, so again, I am at a really unassuming intersection. There have been a couple of trucks and some cars that have driven by here, 104th and Cynthia Ann. And this intersection actually means a little bit to me because I used to live in Fishers. I don't anymore just because it doesn't work for our day-to-day -day geographically, but I still love Fishers and lived there for 16 years. And this part of Fishers, wildly different now. So I used to be a cyclist. I used to ride my bike a ton with especially one good friend. We rode lots and lots of miles and we would usually ride either from my house but mostly from his house because he was a little bit more to the north and a little bit further east in Fishers than I was. So that was kind of our home base and we would shoot out a little to the north then to the east and then to the south, kind of to get out and away from everything that was Fishers and Noblesville. And we stayed east and south of essentially all of that. So this intersection is one of the intersections that we would actually go by quite often. And we're talking 15, 20 years ago. So this house was there, but then all these of these houses that surround me in the background, including a little further to the south where you can get down to 96th Street, none of this was here. I mean, it was absolutely blank. So we got all the way out here to get away from just that, these cars that are, driving by. Now the traffic certainly isn't bad out here right now because it's still not incredibly populated, but this, at least at that time, was about as rural as you could get in Fishers. So the rest of Fishers was pretty much a suburban city. And so very residential, lots of neighborhoods, and then you'd have shops and stores and things like that here and there. That has definitely gotten busier and more populated, Fishers in general as a delivery truck of some kind, but this area felt fairly rural. Now, if you're out this way, if you drive out, let's say from downtown Fishers, it's a good number of miles from downtown Fishers. Just in my head, I'd probably say we're about 10 miles, I-69 and 116th Street intersection. That's kind of where downtown Fishers really is. So we are pretty far east of that, definitely. And if you just cross this street, Cynthia Ann Road, right where these cars are going, they're from going from Fishers, into Fortville. Now, it's confusing as to where the Fishers border and the Fortville border actually exist. It's not always just Cynthia Ann Road here. In fact, if I go just a little bit to the south, you can get to Flat Fort Creek Park, which is a Fishers Park, and that's east of where I'm standing. And you can get a couple of neighborhoods even east of that and still have a Fishers address. But then you'll start getting in this neighborhoods with a Fortville address. So it kind of snakes its way through here in a really uneven line but literally across the street. That house right there is a Fortville address. These guys are all a Fisher's address. So this area isn't as rural anymore, not because only Fisher's is expanding. And this is really the main direction that Fisher's is going toward the east and a lot towards this southeast part, but also towards the northeast before it runs into Pendleton for the most part, and also maybe a little bit of Fortville too. But you've got Fortville expanding this way. So Fortville is coming to the west, back to Fisher's. And you have McCordsville, if I'm looking to the south, McCordsville coming this way. And they're fairly small towns. McCordsville's not quite 10,000 people, but it will be in the very near future. It's around the eight to nine mark right now. 
and then Fortville is around five or so, and it's going to continue to grow. So this whole area is going to be more and more filled in. So it doesn't really feel like far east fishers anymore until you have to make that drive back to the west into the heart of fishers back to that 116th and i-69 intersection now if you were living in this area and you wanted to go to let's say a grocery store or a restaurant something like that well biggest grocery store that you're going to have nearby is either going to be a Meyer, which is going to be down in McCordsville, or you can get back to the Kroger at, let's say, 116th and Oleo, which would be several miles back to the west. Until more things fill in in this area, that would be the almost the only indication anymore that you're kind of on the outskirts. But I think over the, the years, that's definitely something that's going to change. And this, again, won't feel as far East Fishers. But years ago when we were riding bikes, this was as blank as it could be. And you really didn't get into a whole lot of traffic at all, You know, which is what you would certainly worry about whenever you're out on a bike, you're worried about cars. So we came out here to avoid all of those things. Now, once you get out here, this is another thing that gets a little bit funky. So the line between Fishers and Fortville, not a dead straight line. So you can actually get into some addresses along here where you'd have a Fortville address but you're actually in Hamilton Southeastern schools. So that actually happens in a lot of neighborhoods. And if you're looking at a particular neighborhood or you're looking at a particular home, that's just something you have to pay attention to in a neighborhood by neighborhood basis or just a, a home by home basis, especially if you see that Fortville address and you think, well, I'm not sure I wanna be outside of the Hamilton Southeastern School District. I think maybe I want to be in that and I wanna to go to Fisher Schools. Now, some people might not mind being in Fortville and going to the school district that Fortville is really part of because Fortville is technically part of a whole different county than Fishers. So out here, along with the border of Fishers being a little bit goofy, the border between Hamilton County, which Fishers is actually located in, and Hancock County gets a little bit skewed. So Fortville is part of Hancock County and actually part of Mount Vernon schools. And Mount Vernon School District in Northern Hancock County, it's also a highly rated school district, just much, much smaller. Dump truck, so definitely some loud brakes on a dump truck. You can definitely see there's construction going on out here. It's still expanding, of course, but Fortville, part of Mount Vernon Schools, it's something you'd have to research, of course, to see if it's right for you. At least a lot of people know Hamilton Southeastern Schools are very highly rated, but then they're kind of surprised with Mount Vernon. I didn't realize these were as highly rated as they are, and it is much smaller, which is something that a lot of people do like, so it is an option. But you can still have the Fortville address and be in Mount Vernon, Hancock County, or you can have the Fortville address and be in Hamilton Southeastern School. So it does get a little bit confusing through here, and even fishers can leak into Hancock County outside of Hamilton County. So it just gets very convoluted, and it's something you have to make sure you're paying close attention to whenever you're looking at, as I said, at a particular place. So East Fishers is actually a pretty big area because from 96th Street all the way up generally to about 146th Street or I-69 where it curves and makes its way to the east, that's the distance that you're covering for all of Fishers before you get into Indianapolis to the south or Noblesville to the north. So if East Fishers is something that's on your radar and you wanna know, is it very rural? What does it feel like? Or is it gonna to be too far east? Just know that maybe it is right now, but it certainly isn't like it was years ago. And here in the future, it's just gonna be pulled in and become not less east, but certainly lose a lot of that feel. So if you have questions at all about Fishers or East Fishers or any place else in Fishers or the whole Indy Metro for that matter, then reach out any way that you know how. And until the next one, we'll see you later.